lesson five, we'll use basic pulse beats and legato lines to show timing. Hopefully now, you'll be able to use the notated version of the syllabus to help you answer questions with your basic knowledge of Benish notation. Now let's talk about timing, because this is another thing where questions often crop up and you can easily answer your own questions by looking at the notated version of the syllabus. You'll notice that in our stave, we have the top number of the time signature placed at the beginning. As dancers, we're not really concerned about the type of notes that the musician is using. We only need to know how many beats we're counting per bar. And for the moment, let's limit ourselves to the simple time signatures, such as 2, 4, 3, 4. And I've placed a 3 here, which will tell us right away that we have three beats in a bar. And now I'm going to show my starting position. You'll notice that I have eliminated the dotted line, because I think we're at a point now where you'll be able to recognize when things are on the right and when things are on the left. And there's my first bar line, where I'll start my basic exercise. So I'll notate a tendu devant, a closing in front, a tendu to the side, and a closing behind. And if I want to finish, I'll put a double bar line. Now you may have noticed that I put a three here, so we're in three, four time, and I've got three beats per bar, but I've only written in two positions in each bar. So I have a question of timing. Do I take my battement du devant on count one and close on count two, or do I close on count three? And this can be answered by the use of the spacing, in this case, or a pulse beat. This is what a pulse beat looks like. And in this way that I've written this particular exercise, it's clear from the spacing that I'm holding on count three. The reason I say that is I've got three, I should expect three pictures when I've got three beats in a bar. But I've placed towards the beginning of my bar, I've placed one picture and the second picture, and there's nothing here. So in the way that I've placed the positions, it tells me that I'm taking my tendu devant on count one, I've closed in front on count two, and I do nothing on count three. And in the second bar, I point to the side on count one, I've closed behind on count two, and I do nothing on count three. What if I want to hold count two? Well, I'll do that partly by spacing, but also by using this pulse beat over the space. So now I have written that I've got a tendu devant on count one. I have nothing on count two, and that's shown by this pulse beat. I close on count three. I point to the side on count one, nothing on count two, shown by the pulse beat, and I close on count three. The other option would be if I wanted to hold on count one. Now, starting from my fifth position with the right foot in front, Nothing happens on the count of one. I point to the front on two, close on three. I hold on count one, point to the side on count two, and close behind on count three. And that will now leave open quite a variation of timings that I can show with the use of the pulse beat whenever I want to hold it. The next situation that comes up is when I want to do things over time. So now let's say, that I'm going to keep my same time signature and now I'm going to do a port de bras and I want the arms to go to fifth position by the third count and they've passed as you can see by my qualifying sign 
They've passed through first position. Now, if I leave it just like that, my spacing, it's, re it's a bit unclear. I'm not sure exactly how I'm getting there. I, I could do this. And that would tell me that I do nothing on the first count, nothing on the second count, and then pass through first to fifth on the third count. But let's say that I want to do it over time. I use what we also use in music called a legato line, which is placed over the top of the stave. And what I can do is this legato line goes like so. Now traditionally, if I'm doing a movement over an entire bar and the final position is shown at the end, it's clear to me that it takes the whole bar to do it by my legato line. In Benish notation, we tend to only write what we is, is absolutely necessary to make the information clear. But as I can also become a little bit more complicated in my timing, let's say that I would like to arrive in fifth position by count two. Then, if I did not write anything further, it would be very unclear what my timing is. So I've got a pulse beat here, and I'll put a legato line over those two counts. And now I can see that it has taken me two counts to get from first to fifth, and I do nothing on the third count, simply by the way I've placed these signs. So the new information that you've got then is the use of the pulse beat and the use of the legato line to make things move over time. I can also use the legato line to make things move smoothly through a series of positions. Let's say that I'm going to keep my, my um, port de bras through first to fifth by count two and nothing on count three. And I'm going to move my arms to second and then eventually to bra ba. But I want all of this to happen smoothly. So now what I've shown is that, I'll show it to you sideways. My arms are going through first to fifth by count two, and I hold on three. I get to second by count one of the second bar, but I take two counts and I keep moving and arrive in bra ba by count three. So this is all smooth and continuous motion. I've arrived in second on one, and I've continued to move since I've, although I have the pulse beat, it's under a legato line, I've continued to move to bra ba, but it's taking me two counts. And that way I can show positions that I want to pass through at a certain time. Alternatively, I could have written that. And that's much more non-specific. I'm still saying that I'm going from fifth through second to bra ba, but I haven't been specific about exactly when I want to get when I want to be at the various spots. So I'm starting on my first count of that bar and arriving by three, but I haven't been specific about when I hit second position. Those are the differences. So now we're going to do as we have done before use a demonstrator who's going to move while we show the notation underneath so that you can see how one relates directly to the other. Michelle is standing in fifth with the right foot in front, arms in bra ba. One, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three. Notice that she's moving on the first and third count of the bar, and we've shown that in the notation with a pulse beat over the second frame. She did a battement du devant with the arms in first, closing in fifth, and another battement du with the right arm opening to create third with the arms, closing in fifth, another battement du but closing with a demi plie, and a releve with the right arm joining the left in first position. At the end, she finished with a demi plie. Now Michelle is going to show the same exercise with slightly different timing. One, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three. Now Michelle was moving on the first and second count of each bar, 
and holding on the third count. The spacing in the notation makes it clear that that's the timing of the exercise. Thank you.